Hello, today we are going to consider compound interest and the compound interest rule. In normal commercial transactions, if one person has the use of money belonging to someone else, the first person has to pay the second for the privilege of having the use of the money. This sum of money is called the principal. The fee for having the use of someone else's money is called interest. Interest is usually expressed as a rate, for example a percentage over a period of time. For example, a rate of interest may be stated as 5% per annum, which means that if the person with the use of the money has the money for one year, then they have to pay 5% of the principal by way of interest. For mathematical calculations, we prefer to write interest rates as decimals. For example, an interest rate of 5% can be converted to a decimal by dividing by 100, giving 0 0.05. We can use the letter I to stand for interest rate. Now suppose that a principal of €1,000 is invested for one year at 5% per annum. The amount or value A of the investment at the end of one year is then the principal €1,000 plus the interest which we can write as capital I. The interest is 5% of €1,000. This can be written as I by P. The interest is €50. Euro. So in general A is equal to P plus I. The amount is the principal plus the interest. Then writing the interest as IP we get A is equal to P plus IP. Taking P out as a common factor and placing it at the end we get A is equal to in brackets 1 plus I times P. This gives the very important compound interest rule to find the amount A at the end of one time period, for example a year, multiply the principal P at the beginning of that time period by 1 plus I, where I is the rate of interest for the period, i.e., in other words, A is equal to P times 1 plus I. There is a number of ways of calculating, calculating interest, but the most important one, and the only one in our course, is called compound interest. Under compound interest, the instant that interest is paid, it is added to the principal and becomes part of the principal for the next time period. There is a formula for compound interest which will be seen in a later unit. But if the rate of interest changes or money is added or removed during the period of the investment, the formula cannot be used and you should use the rule and work the calculation on a year-by-year -year basis. Here is an example. Luke invests €5,000. He gets 4%, 5% and 5.5% per annum, respectively, in the first three years. Part 1. Find the value of his investment at the end of the third year. Part 2. At the end of the third year, Luke withdraws X euro and allows the rest of his investment to grow for one further year at 6% per annum. If the value of his investment at the end of the fourth year is €5,257.92. Find the value of X, correct to the nearest euro. First, we'll do part one. Year one, in the beginning, the value of the investment is €5,000. The value of the investment at the end of the first year can now be found by multiplying €5,000 by 1 plus 0 0.04. The rate of interest for the year is 4%, so I is 0 0.04. This in turn can then be written down as 5,000 euro multiplied by 1.04. Calculator gives this as 5,200 euro. Now, for year two, whatever we finish year one with becomes the principal at the beginning of year two. So the value of the investment at the beginning of year two is 5,200 euro. To find the value at the end, Seeing as the rate of interest for the second year is 5%, we multiply 5,200 by 1.05, which we find is 5,460 euro. Once again, the amount at the end of the second year becomes the principal at the beginning of the third year. So the value at the, of the investment at the beginning of the third year is 5,460 euro. To find its value at the end of the third year, where the rate of interest was 5.5%, we multiply 5,460 by 1.055, which gives 5,760 euro and 30 cent. 
So this is the value of Luke's investment after three years. Now we do part two. Year four. The principal at the beginning of year four is 5760.3 minus x euro. The amount at the end of year four can now be found by multiplying the principal by 1.06. When this is multiplied out, this comes to 6105.92 minus 1.06x euro. Now, from the information given in the question, we can write down the equation 5257.92 equals 6105.92 minus 1.06x. Rearranging this to bring the x term to the left and the numbers terms to the right, we get 1.06x equals 6105.92 minus 5257.92. Combining the numbers on the right, we get 1.06x is equal to 848. Now, dividing by 1.06, x is equal to 848 divided by 1.06. This gives x is equal to 800. That's it. Thanks for listening.